on this episode of Small Town Flavor. Birthplace of Kentucky, let's, let's go. go. Welcome to McDowell House, and she lived for 32 years after the surgery. I'm Panini Pete, a professional chef with small town roots and a passion for one of a kind places. I'm day tripping down the back roads and main streets of America to prove that small towns are extraordinary destinations, each one rich in history and full of happiness, where people care about people and treat you like one of their own. They celebrate life, tradition, and one of a kind food culture. So join me as we gather all the local ingredients to serve up a big helping of small town flavor. It took all we have to bring us here We have arrived and the coast is clear Happy days, my love The villain he has left in fear The angels come to keep us clear Alive in a moment All's not broken We have woken up this time Well, are you all ready for a little time travel? We're here just off of Main Street at Constitution Square to learn more about why Danville is truly a city of firsts. Now, Constitution Square is a three-acre open-air historical museum that goes into the early history of Danville as well as the beginnings of the Commonwealth of Kentucky itself. Our tour is going to start right here at Grayson's Tavern. We're going inside to meet up with Brenda Willoughby, and she is going to bring the story of Constitution Square to life. Let's go. With your principles and your many demands, sometimes traveling's for sleeping. Ah, here we are. Brenda, hey, I presume. Please. How are you? Welcome good to, to Grayson's see you. Tavern. It's good to be here. So, Grayson's Tavern, I will. Uh, I assume maybe I can get a cold beer yes, here, huh? It was, um, or at actually, least at one time. It was a food uh, establishment and also an inn. The men that were instrumental in meeting for the state constitutions, they came in here and met. We were a district of Virginia. We were Kentucky district, and actually Kentucky County is what they said. And being so far from Virginia, you know, they could, it, it took three or four days to get back and forth to get answers on what do we do about. Um, the, we're fighting Indians. We wow. have local government issues. We were a district of Virginia. We were Kentucky district, and actually Kentucky County is what they said we were as a part of Virginia. So, that, so it was something that just out of necessity that wasn't just reasons of going, wow, we need to do this, we're right. radical, we don't like Virginia. It's just we are so far removed from that. Right. We have our own issues, our own problems, and we would like our own freedoms to deal right. with that. The fire's crackling, I mean, you can just imagine. And, and there's seats around here, and, and the men are sitting here talking about um, separating from Virginia and having some libations. And also, our first um, governor, Isaac Shelby, uh, it is documented that on his way to become governor, he was going to be, his inauguration was in Lexington, and he lived about six miles from here, and he came in on horseback on his way to Lexington. They had a lavish party for him in here. He actually slept upstairs. That is incredible. And then he got up the next day and went and was sworn in. Now, I'm sure by horseback, it took him about three days to get to Lexington from here. Are you ready to let me take you back in time and tell you the story of Constitution I am so Square? ready. This is so interesting, and it all happened here. In Kentucky history, right here. I'm ready to go soak it up. Birthplace of Kentucky. Let's, Let's go. go. Okay, Pete, now let's head to the courthouse since this was the location for uh, the convention. This is where the, kind of the plans went, yes, and then the that plans, was kind of the next step. Right. This picture um, was done in 1961 depicting the men actually signing the Kentucky Constitution, and you'll see the frontiersmen. Frontiersmen back there, as well as the statesmen. Yeah. There's a copy of the Kentucky Constitution, the final Kentucky Constitution. It took 10 conventions until 1792. They finally hammered out the Constitution. Eight years. And we're now the 15th state mm -hmm. in the Union. Now we're gonna go into the 
to the jail. And to the jail cell. When they settled here, they built a courthouse, a jail, and a church. You had to really do something bad to be in, to be in jail. To be held in jail. Right. You can usually pay your fine, barter system, chickens. You could pay with chickens. You could pay with corn, bourbon, whatever. Bourbon. That was a big... Right, right. So a lot of times... Exchange. And a lot of times they would just take them to the edge of town and say, don't come back. Let's beat it. This is Governor's Circle. This is beautiful. This is uh, where all the former governors, after they have served office in Kentucky, uh, we honor them by placing a plaque here. Beautiful. Interesting enough, mm -hmm. we only had one female as governor. And that's actually when I came to work for uh, Kentucky State Park. So you did. Well, there's probably some states that haven't. Yeah. So that's Martha not Lane so Collins. bad. Yeah, look at that. Martha Lane in 1983. Now. What's this? Who do you think these two men are? Probably the first governor uh, of the state. Hey, I don't know. You're close. Could be. You're close. Close? No. You're close. These two men are on our state seal. They uh, depict oh. a frontiersman and a, and a statesman. And these are the kind of men that would have been here to help Kentucky become a state. We've made a name since we were This is the only original log cabin on this historic site. Oh, so this isn't a reproduction. This is no. the real deal. This is the real log cabin post office. Well, fantastic. This is a replica inside of we what we think maybe the post office look like. The saddlebags. Right. Ready for Your the, mail the was pony delivered express. Your mail was delivered by a pony or yeah. wagon. Um, interesting enough, I'm going to ask you a trick question here. Uh-oh. How much do you think it cost to mail a letter in 1792? In 1792? Mm -hmm. I would imagine it they didn't do it for free. You had to pay. You had to half pay. Half a cent? I don't know. How did you do that? It is a half a cent. I'm just good you that. get an A for, for that. We have a list of the first uh, uh, postmaster, who was Thomas Barbie. But look who's under. Ephraim McDowell was a postmaster. That's right. As well. That's right. So, so he uh, had, not only was he a doctor. Many talents. But he was a postmaster and also. Very famous, not because he was a postmaster, but no. we're going to learn out later what right. his contribution was to the world. Exactly. And this is where, this shows where it was moved, down by the hospital. And they started to move it. They were going to tear it down, and they started pulling the siding off, and they did some research, and it's, it was the first post office, office west of the Alleghenies. Unbelievable. The original post office, this is beautiful. Are there any other original structures on the property? Yeah, right across here we have Fisher's Row Houses mm -hmm. and the Watts Bell House. Fisher's Row Houses, interestingly enough, were built for rental property. Wow. Jeremiah Fisher built those to rent, rent them out in the early 1800s. Mm -hmm. And leading up to the schoolhouse, uh, that's an original two-room schoolhouse in the early 1800s. And then next to that is Grayson's Tavern where we started. So that's, that, right. that's an original building as well. Right. Well, this has been a fantastic tour. Thank you so much Thank for your you time. Thank you for coming. Really and enjoyed it. And it's always great to have an expert on hand. Hey, I don't know, know about that. To get all the details. <laughs> Fortunately, right across the street is our next stop. So we're going to head over there and learn some more about Danville's First. The villain he has left in fear. The angels come to keep us clear. The light. We have woken up this time All's not broken We have woken up this time In 1795, Ephraim McDowell settled here in Danville and began his practice as a surgeon. And if you'll remember, simultaneously, he was one of Danville's earliest postmasters. Back in 1809, Ephraim McDowell wrote a whole new chapter in medical history right here in this very house. And here to tell us more about that incredible story is Miss Alberta. How are you? Oh, fine, thank you. Welcome to McDowell House. I'm so glad to be here. Dr. McDowell was born in Virginia, 1771. Came to Danville when he was 12 years old. George Washington sent his father, Samuel, to Kentucky to be in charge of land courts. 
Ephraim wanted to be a doctor. He went to Virginia, studied with a Dr. Humphreys, and then he got to go study at the University of Edinburgh, which was a wonderful two years for him. He could have stayed in New York, probably made a whole lot more money, but he wanted to come back home. And uh, he was married here? And he was married here, married, married here. the governor's daughter, Sarah Shelby, in 1802. All of the furniture is before uh, 1830. Men came to have a, a little bit of cherry bounce over here. And they played cards. This cherry bounce is made from cherries, cherry bounce. brown sugar, uh -huh. and good whiskey. Thank you. <laughs> uh, also. You guys know a little bit about good whiskey here in, in Kentucky, <laughs> Yes, huh? yes, we do. And this is the doctor's portrait. It was painted 10 years before he died, and those are books that he had when he was studying at the university. Now, go. we'll go down these steps. It'll go all right around here. here. Oh, good. This and was Ephraim's medicine garden, where he grew the plants that he would have used for medicine. We've got peppermint and Greek yes. oregano, margarine. Yes, these. These Ice up. Used English uh, lavender, uh, women and children's health and yes. nerves. Garden time for winter illness, immune support and digestion. Butterfly weed. Who is it that takes care of these medicinal gardens today? The Garden Club of Danville. Oh, the Danville so, Garden Club. Yeah. Good job. Uh, the ladies, and some of them bring their husbands with them, and they have worked very well. I'm sure. <laughs> oh yes. So the community continues to help support its history yes. and heritage. Yes. That's great. It's one thing we love about small towns. We hear that. That's a theme we hear over and over again. Yes, the cooperation and the uh, cohesiveness. It's great. Well, I'd love to go inside and even learn more about the apothecary and his shop here. You can lead the way. And now we'll go into the apothecary shop. This is the original shop. Yes, Dr. McDowell started practicing here in 1795. So they had a scale for the scale laying out their That belonged medicines. to him. He bought that in Venice. Between his two terms at Edinburgh. And of course you've got your bleeding input. When, Bloodletting was... When you were sick, they bled you. And these little ones, that's when they started using powdered medicine. This is where the doctor made pills. Ah. Uh, he would mix uh, cookie dough, biscuit dough, and he would put it down on this. Mm -hmm. And then he would put some of his medicines on it and then he would push it down like this and bring it back and then break it up. And it would be in these slivers, is that a good word? Yeah. <laughs> that, and then they put it over here and slice it off into the dose size. So and then they would put size. sugar and whatever kind of medicines that they needed, sprinkle it on that and roll it up in their fingers. Make pills. That's how they I'd like to know a little bit about yourself and how you came to be here and giving the tours and... Well, I've been working here about 26 years. After my husband died, I liked Danville, so I came here. I saw an ad in the paper one day, said they needed somebody, and I thought, I can do that job, I can talk. I had liked history in school and continued to read everything in history about Kentucky learn more about it all the time. I've met so many nice people. I've met and got to know some of the McDowell family. I work with the genealogy too, so they're nice to know. And oh, we're imagine. on a first name basis, which, which makes it incredible. nice. I'd love to see where that historical surgery was performed. All right, we'll go upstairs to the bedroom and see where it is. Fantastic. Well, let me get out of the way and I will follow you. All right. All right.
I will come here, go into Dr. McDowell's bedroom. Oh, this is a beautiful room. Here uh, we have the chair that the ladies use for drying their hair. The first one of the first things I know is a portrait George of George Washington. Washington. Friend of Dr. Friend of McDowell's family. father, Andrew Jackson, Andrew Jackson, a good friend of Dr. McDowell. The trunk is interesting. The first trunks were really tree trunks. That one belonged to Jefferson Davis. That one belonged? I'm yes. Believe. Well, I've noticed, Alberta, this small doorway over here. Can you tell me a little bit about what this is and where that leads to? Well, this part of the house was built between 1802 and 1804. Uh, they, we think, lived in a brick house that was here. And then they wanted to make the bigger house. So they pushed this up against the old brick house and this was a window. Gee, I watch my head. I have to watch my belly button coming through here. <laughs> it's so low. <laughs> oh, I know. And this is the operating room. This is the operating room, so. We think he chose that because it was near his bedroom. So he can keep a close eye close on the off. patients. Uh -huh. While she was and doing that. This is where medical history was made, right yes. here. Jane was 46, she had four children, and she decided she was pregnant again. But there was something about this pregnancy that was different. So she saw a doctor, and he told her she was big. She was gonna have twins. She woke one morning early, told Thomas, let's go and bring the doctor back. The doctor came and they worked for days. They could not deliver these twins. So she asked Ephraim uh, when he got there if he could do anything. So he told her after an examination, he wanted to be sure that he was right, that he found the tumor there. He had told her before that couldn't be because the way the, it was, she was fat all on one side. So he knew it wasn't pregnancy. And he knew that it wasn't a pregnancy. So she had to ride a horse. Took her three days to get from Greene County to Danville. He put her to bed to rest for a few days. Then he got up Christmas morning and then he begins to get ready for the operation. He had two young apprentices uh, who brought up a table of ordinary height. And that we believe is a big old square table in the kitchen. They put her on the table. They covered her face with a handkerchief. And then they began the surgery. There was no anesthetic. He needed her to be able to move to help him in some ways. And then he tells how they did the surgery make an incision, the intestines all popped out all over, and they clean those out, and then they go to bring out that sack. It's too big to come out the incision. So now we've got to make the incision bigger, and they let out 15 and a half pounds of an old, dirty, ugly, smelly fluid, and then they were able to bring out the sack 25 minutes, she's back in her bed, resting kindly. Five days after the surgery, the doctor knocked on that little door. She says, come in, doctor. And he walks in and she's making her bed. That scared him. He told her that she must go back to bed and stay and rest a while. 25 days later, she did, she went back home and she lived for 32 years after the surgery. That was the first successful abdominal surgery that had ever been performed. Yes. It did not result in death. Uh -huh. That's incredible to have. Right?
still ahead on our journey through Danville, Kentucky. So this is the longest, I would guess, constant running business, commercial business district in America. It's hard to believe as peaceful it is out here right now. One of the bloodiest battles in Civil War history was held right here on these hollow grounds. There are about 10 Somerset theaters left in the country, and we are one of them. In the uh, beer world, they refer to a system of this size uh, as a nano brewery. See you, Welcome man. to Mermaid. Glad to be here. Yeah. It's part of the whole Kentucky Proud program. Yes. Took all we have to bring us here We have arrived and the coast is clear Happy days, my love The villain he has left in fear The angels come to keep us clear Alive in a moment All's not broken We have 